In this session, we will discuss about how to deal with deadlocks and starvation. Now, when does a deadlock occur? A deadlock occurs when each transaction in a set of two or more transactions is waiting for some item that is locked by some other transaction. Hence, each transaction in the set is in waiting queue, waiting for one of the other transactions in the set to release the lock on the item. But because the other transaction is also waiting, it will never release the lock. We will see a simple example of deadlocks. Here we have two transactions T1 dash and T2 dash. Now both this transaction T1 and T2 are deadlocked in a partial schedule. T1 is in waiting queue for X, which is locked by transaction T2. While transaction T2 is in waiting queue for Y, which is locked by transaction T1. So neither T1 nor T2 nor any other transaction can access X and Y. If you have a look at the weight graph, you can see T1 is requesting for X which is held by T2 and T2 is requesting for Y which is held by T1. So this scenario indicates that there is a deadlock between T1 and T2. Now one way to prevent deadlock is to make use of deadlock prevention protocols. One deadlock prevention protocol which is used is conservative two-phase locking mechanism which we have already seen in the previous session. Now this conservative two-phase locking mechanism requires that every transaction lock all the items it needs in advance. If any of the items cannot be obtained, none of the items are locked. A number of other deadlock prevention schemes have been proposed that make a decision about what to do with a transaction which is involved in a possible deadlock situation. Should it be blocked and made to wait or should it be aborted? Or should the transaction preempt and abort another transaction? Now here we will see some new techniques that will help us prevent deadlock. The first technique is called as the transaction timestamp, which is written as TS of T. So here T indicates the transaction and TS indicates the timestamp of this transaction. Now this timestamp is a unique identifier which is assigned to each transaction. The timestamps are typically based on the order in which the transactions are started. So if transaction T1 starts before transaction T2, then the timestamp of transaction T1 will be less than the timestamp of transaction T2. We will discuss about two schemes. The first scheme is wait die and the second scheme is wound wait. So we will see the first scheme in detail. So what is what does the first scheme say? It says that if the timestamp of transaction TI is less than the timestamp of transaction TJ, then in this case TI is older than TJ. So what will happen in this case is TI is allowed to wait, otherwise abort TI. That means TI dies and restart it later with the same timestamp. The second technique that is wound and wait. Now in this case if the timestamp of transaction TI is less than the timestamp of transaction TJ, then in this case TI is older than TJ. So what we do over here is we abort TJ. That means TI wounds TJ and restart it later with the same timestamp. Otherwise, TI will be allowed to wait. We will see both the schemes in detail. Now, what exactly is the wait die mechanism? Then the wait die mechanism 
an older transaction is allowed to wait for a younger transaction. Whereas, when a younger transaction is requesting an item which is held by an older transaction, it is aborted and then restarted later. So, what does it mean? So, here we have transaction T1, transaction T2 and transaction T3. Now, each of this transaction is assigned a unique ID or a unique timestamp in the increasing order. Now, one thing to note over here is that all the earlier transactions will have a smaller timestamp. So, here if the timestamp is 5, then the timestamp for this will be 6, then this will be 7 and so on. Now, what is the purpose of this timestamp? To give the older transaction a smaller timestamp. So, the transactions which have started earlier are called as the older transactions which will have a smaller timestamp. So, we consider this timestamp as a higher priority over the younger transactions. So, two cases when an older transaction tries to lock a database element that has been locked by a younger transaction. So, in this case what will happen is the older transaction will wait until the lock is released by the younger transaction. But when a younger transaction tries to lock a database element that has been locked by an older transaction, then in this case what we do is the younger transaction will die or will be aborted. We will try to understand the same thing with the help of a diagram both the cases. Here we have a transaction T1 and transaction T2. So, transaction T1 is the older transaction, transaction T2 is the younger transaction. Now, transaction T1 is requesting a lock on data item X which is held by transaction T2. Now, in this case, transaction T1 which is an older transaction will be made to wait. Whereas in the second case, we have transaction T1, we have transaction T2. In this case, a younger transaction is requesting a lock on a data item X which is held by an older transaction. Now in this case, this younger transaction will be aborted or will have to die. So this is how wait and die protocol works. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there is a no deadlock possible in this particular scheme. So, if you see over here, as we have already discussed in the previous slide, a younger transaction which is requesting a lock on a data item which is held by an older transaction. So, in this case, the younger transaction will be aborted. The same thing is happening over here. The younger transaction will have to be aborted. So, this will release the deadlock in this scenario. So, there is no wait allowed in this mechanism. We see the next mechanism that is the second scheme. So, we have already gone through this the wait, the wound and wait algorithm. Now, what happens in this method? Okay. The wound wait approach does exactly the opposite what happens in wait and die. A younger transaction is allowed to wait for an older one, whereas an older transaction requesting an item which is held by a younger transaction will preempt the younger transaction by aborting it. So, in wound wait, tra transaction only wait for older transaction. So, in, since it is waiting only for older transaction, a cycle will never be created. 
but both these techniques may cause some transaction to be aborted and restarted. So even though those transaction may never actually cause a deadlock. We will see what is this wait and wound. Sorry, wound and wait. So when a transaction is aborted and restart, the transaction will retain its old transaction timestamp. So eventually what will happen is the transaction will become the oldest transaction and finally it will complete its execution. So we consider some transactions over here T1, T2, T3 and each transaction is assigned an unique increasing timestamp. So obviously the earlier transaction will receive a smaller timestamp. Now the purpose of the timestamp is the same to give the older transaction a smaller timestamp which is of a higher priority. We have seen this in the previous protocol also. Now here also there are two cases. Okay. So when an older transaction tries to lock a database element that has been locked by a younger transaction. So in this case what will happen is the older transaction will wound or will kill or will abort the younger transaction whereas when a younger transaction tries to lock a database element that has been locked by an older transaction so in this case what will happen is the younger transaction will wait until the lock is released by the older transaction we'll try to understand this with the help of an ex with a diagram here also there are two cases so we have transaction t1 and we have transaction t2 transaction t1 which is an older transaction and T2 are younger transaction. So T2 is already holding a lock on database item X and T1 is requesting an older transaction is requesting a lock on X. So in this case what will happen is it will kill the younger transaction or basically it will wound the younger transaction. Whereas in the next case when a older transaction is holding a lock on a database item X and an younger transaction is requesting a lock on the same database item X. So in this case what will happen is the younger transaction which is requesting a lock will be made to wait. So this is how the wound and wait protocol will work. So in this case also there, will, there won't be a deadlock since the younger transaction will be killed. So there is no cycle in the graph. So in this case you can see that the transaction T1 will kill or abort the younger transaction Tn which will release the cycle in this. If you observe carefully or if you have understood both this method, in both the protocols, wait and wound wait, the younger transaction gets aborted. The older transaction is never to be aborted. Now another group of protocols that prevent deadlocks and do not require timestamp, one of the protocol is no waiting algorithm. Now in this no waiting algorithm, if a transaction is unable to obtain a lock, it is immediately aborted and then restarted after a certain time delay without checking whether a deadlock will actually occur or not. So now in this case what happens is no transaction will ever wait. So a deadlock will, so no deadlock will ever occur. The next mechanism or the next protocol is called as the cautious waiting algorithm. Now in this cautious waiting algorithm, if a transaction TI tries to lock an item X but is not able to do because X is locked by some other transaction TJ. Now in such a type of conflict what will happen is if TJ, the next transaction that is TJ is not waiting for some other locked item then TI is allowed to wait otherwise the transaction TI will be aborted. 
coming to deadlock detection so when we talk about deadlock detection it is an another approach to deal with deadlock so basically we are trying to detect if there's a deadlock in the system or not now the system will check if a state of deadlock actually exists so one of the possibility is to check for a cycle every time an edge is added to the wait for graph so now when a wait for graph is created we will check if there is a cycle so the moment we get a cycle we know that there is a deadlock in the schedule so how do we take care of this deadlock so one method is by selecting a victim now choosing which transaction to abort is called as victim selection the algorithm for victim selection should generally avoid selecting transactions that have been running for a long time and that have performed many updates and it should try to instead select those transaction that have nev that have not made much changes so basically you try to uh, select a transaction with a time stamp or a younger transaction with a higher time stamp so that would be a victim so the concept of deadlock detection or deadlock avoidance or deadlock pre prevention is the same that you have done in your operating systems now another method to deal with timeouts is deal deal with deadlocks is timeouts so if a transaction waits for a longer than a system defined timeout period the system assumes that the transaction may be deadlocked and aborts it regardless is regardless of whether a deadlock actually exists or not so you can make use of timeouts also to deal with deadlocks now another problem that you might face when using locking mechanism is starvation so what is the starvation the starvation occurs when a transaction cannot proceed for an indefinite period of time while other transactions in the system continue normally so starvation can also occur because of victim selection if the algorithm selects the same transaction as a victim repeatedly again and again then this will cause it to abort and never finish the execution the wait die and wound wait scheme which we discussed previously avoid starvation because they restart a transaction that has been ab aborted with the same original time stamp so the possibility that the same transaction is ab aborted repeatedly is very fine is all very less we move on to the next topic that is concurrency concurrency control based on time stamp ordering we'll go through an algorithm which is called as the time stamp ordering algorithm so the idea for this scheme is to order the transaction based on the time stamps need to keep in mind that when we refer to any database item so if we have a database item x this database item x will have two time stamps one is the read time stamp and one is the write time stamp so when we are using this algorithm that is time stamp ordering algorithm if you want to if a transaction is issuing a read operation then what we do is we check the write time stamp of that database item x if the write time stamp of the database item x is greater than the time stamp of the incoming transaction then we abort this transaction and we roll back so this operation is only for reading else what we do is we check if the read time stamp of the database item x is less than the time stamp of the incoming transaction t if it is less then 
we assign the timestamp of the incoming transaction to the database item x. So this operation is performed when you are performing a read operation. So we have an example over here. We have three transaction T1, T2, T3 and we have a database item X. Okay. So T1 wants to read the database item X. So when it is reading the database item X, we check for the right timestamp of the database item X. So now since the right timestamp of the database item X is greater than the in than the timestamp of incoming transaction this particular transaction will be aborted we move on to the next operation that is write operation now in this case what we do is we check if the read timestamp of the database item x is greater than the incoming time then the uh, greater than the timestamp of incoming transaction or if the right timestamp of x is greater than the timestamp of incoming transaction in this in both the cases we abort the transaction t and we roll back else what we do is we assign the timestamp of incoming transaction to the right timestamp of the database item X. So when we perform a write operation, we check with read or we write, and but when we perform a read operation, we check only for write. So now we'll have a look at an example over here. We have transaction T1, T2, T3, T4. So the timestamp of incoming transaction T1 is 1, here it is 2, 3, and 4. We have the database item X where the read timestamp is 3 and the write timestamp is 4. Now here since the timestamp of this is greater than the timestamp of incoming transaction, we do not perform this write operation. 